Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is AJ with Everyday Patio Cover and welcome back. I'm going to give you guys a brief description on how to install a patio room on a raised foundation today. So right now I'm just doing a walkthrough of what they had before. Well, that was kind of an interesting splice they had there with bulbs and it was actually fairly well built. Just a major, uh, you know, they shouldn't have had wood touching the concrete. But the raised foundation kept this room alive for more than, or patio fence area alive for more than 50 years. So overall, it did pretty well. That's an old torch down, uh, rolled on ceiling. So that was part of the leaking problem on the job, as you can see. We came a little bit after it rained that day. So the cool, interesting part of that roof is it basically glassed over. So it just kind of clumped up. It was an odd phenomenon. And I'm sure it's common on rolled roofing. So it's just, you know, kind of showing you the pros and cons of using different roofing materials and how long they last. You can see through the floor there. And yeah, we're taking off all the kind of the ship flap on the rafters before we disassemble the rest of the patio cover. So when you're doing a demo, just do it in stages. Take off the outer layer, the roofing, and then the ship lap. Sometimes you can just cut it off in sections from the rafters, but the roof, it was just too thick of a roof to do that. I actually like the all just simple rafter design for patio covers. It's uh, a nice, clean, simple look, and now it's gone. So we're moving on to taking down the front beam. That kind of broke off in parts, so it's kind of convenient. And in this section, this is just showing kind of the water damage and termites that kind of move in and other bugs. Once you, you shouldn't have wood touching the ground, it always needs to be raised two inches if it's untreated. Or there's some high quality woods that can touch the ground, but most wood should not be just touching the ground. It causes damage like that. And here we're just cutting back the rafters, but two feet just to give the room a little bit extra height those rafters were coming down a little bit low and they're already rotted out at the edges so it was better just to replace them and here we're putting up the hanging channel for visual inspection we're also going to be putting up all the bottom track so you see me prepping the bottom track here i'm going to be using a 3 a drill bit and then drilling about every two feet and then every mullion on the room and h channel so you can just put a 3 8 drill bit, metal drill bit in your impact and get this done fairly quickly. So that's one track we have attached. We're checking square here. So it's not perfectly square and rarely any house is or slab. So we kind of went, that was about a half inch off. So we went with visually square on this job. And then that's us sealing the bottom of the track before we place it back down and secure it with the redheads and then tightening down each of the redheads. Here we're kind of doing the same thing all over again, cutting this one to size and then securing it to the ground, unbolting it, flipping it over, sealing it towards the inside of the room. That's the uh, Tremsel caulking we're using there. It's like a two part sealant. So you're really looking for urethane on the bottom of these rooms. You don't want to just have a silicone caulking. Urethane tends to last better, longer, keep water out. And this is the wall track we're securing to the wall. So about two screws every 16 inches on that, similar to the top track. And these are all the tracks down. Just checking to make sure everything's secured properly, making sure the build's gonna go smoothly. You see all those black lines are the thermal breaks that they put in the channels. So that helps prevent cold and heat from transferring into the room. They also have it in the hanging channel. A little bit hard to see because that's the four inch hanging channel. And this is the first piece of wall board going in. So you want about six to eight inches normally at the beginning and end of each wall room section, just to give yourself some play on moving the windows around. And then there's gonna be a total of four windows 
in this section. That's a mullion right there where we're going to be adding electrical for an AC unit added at the end by our electrician. Those are all the rafters. Uh, after we cut them, we spray painted them just so it wasn't exposed wood uh, to the weather. Makes it easier for termites and other things to get into it. And that's what a wall looks like done. So on the front wall, we're gonna start from the middle and build out to the left and right sides of the corner section that we're putting in right there. And here we're finishing off the left side. Here's a Pella door the customer had ordered. So this is uh, not normally offered, but just a custom addition you can go with on the rooms. It had blinds inside of it, which was a really awesome feature. No dust getting on the blinds. It's kind of a, I'm, I'm all pro sliders with blinds built into them. And here's the first portion of the roof going up. So we made sure to lay out the electrical panels and fan beams properly for the room section inside prior and then we're just going with that layout as we put them up all the windows on this build are vinyl uh, all the frames are vinyl and that does a really good job of like uh, heat and cold transfer not coming through also the windows are dual pane with gas inside so it helps prevent fogging on the inside of the window and again heat and cold from coming through the heat the heat and cold coefficient and this is like a little mini patio section they put off the side so this is just a super simple post and beam patio to support that section of the insulated roof it's as simple as it gets. It's almond colored and so is the trim kit on this patio cover and around the room. And we're just making sure everything's level and square before securing it. Here's the gutter going on. So you want to secure the gutter on the top of the insulated panels, screwing them down so Basically, uh, make it harder for water to get in and have water go properly into the gutter system. Here's the wrap kit going on. Again, almond, just like the post and beam. And these are the drop-in windows going in. So if you had properly leveled off every window frame with like a two-foot level and made sure all your bottom kick plates are the same size as you're building this room, all these windows are going to go in fairly easily. They don't, they're not adjustable, so you kind of want to get that right the first time. Hey guys, so we made it to the end of the video. I want to thank you all for watching. We really appreciate it. And like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions about the video or want to know where to get the product or anything, feel free to comment at the bottom or email us. And again, thank you for watching and Everyday Patio out.